The arrival of Tubishvat, the new year of the trees, has us thinking about the wisdom trees can impart. This is Jews Talk Racial Justice with April and Tracy, a weekly show hosted by April Baskin and Tracy Guy Decker. In a complex world, change takes courage. Wholehearted relationships can keep us accountable. You ready to talk about Tubishvat? Tracy, there's so much to say about Tubishvat. There really is. There really is. It's it's I did not grow up celebrating Tubishvat at all. It was introduced to me as an adult, but there's so much there. There's so many different ways. I mean, as is true of all holidays, holidays, I guess. Um I don't know. This one feels different to, you know, it feels distinctive. You know, at this holiday a specifically chosen one plant of all of the animal fauna and flora kingdom. Like why not the holiday of the lions or the ocean or grass? Yes. yes right. And- like, like it's treat, like, you know, there is. And so part of the reason it's the, the tree is because of the commitment to justice, because there is a requirement for um, fruiting trees about how much you um, leave for the gleaning and, and how much you tithe and, but you, it's based on a year. And so you have to know when the year starts. And so it's not just any, tr- it's, you know, the reason that it was the tree and not the lion or the ocean or the grass is in part because of our the importance of justice uh, to our inherited tradition, which just feels really resonant and alive for me. Here's what's really been on my mind. Do you mind if I Please. go first? You're so friendly and anti-racist. I love <laughs> it. Uh, Tracy, as you know, I am a an emerging Kohenet. I'm a Hebrew priestess. So I recently completed an intensive week of studying, learning, training, and praying for my Kohenet process. Um, I plan on um, becoming ordained as a Kohenet. So my Kohenet ordination process, though I won't specifically start the ordination track of it until about a year from now. And something on my mind that I think is the piece I want to talk about this too, is the intuitive and sacred guidance that trees offer us around how to be in the world. And I've used this in some of my racial justice work. And I recently had an epiphany during my Kohenet training where I was processing something with a fellow student that there are certain spiritual skills that I know I have abilities around and I'm wanting to hone them. And I've been feeling such urgency and lack and like I need to get these skills faster and I want to be able to connect to the divine more consistently through meditation and And I have these desires and, and I'm like, I know that there's something wrong here. Like this doesn't feel right. This frenetic energy I have. And then I realized it reminds me a bit of some of my students. When I do racial justice education, people who are newer in their journey, that I was, that my behavior around wanting to cultivate some of my spiritual, spiritual, as well as psychological discipline and Uh, skills is quite similar to the urgency number some of some of my white students have around racial justice like I give them a lesson around core things that are going to help them over the long haul in this work and they're like I want something right for right now I want it to be concrete I I need it it's not enough it's not there's like this fundamental inadequacy and as And as I remember, you know, I often use the metaphor of a tree. And so that's what I want to talk about right now that I'm really just in this moment, like this is very leading edge for me right now. And so Tubishvat is perfectly. Yeah. The time I'm ushering this in is that rootedness in the context of capitalism 
and racism and patriarchy is so undervalued because to be rooted is to be powerful and systems of oppression don't work well when people are powerful. And yet that is how we cultivate spiritual, emotional, mental, and even racial justice power is by steady, slow, irreversible, consistent progress. And I'm going to be bringing this to my personal meditation practice. I also teach this in the context of my racial justice education, although it has more oomph right now because I'm feeling it more. That first and foremost, when we are taking any number of not necessarily all things, but many things, whether it's anti-racism or racial justice, or for me, really deepening my spiritual practice and really wanting to get much more close and intimate with Shekhinah, with goddess, with God, with my soul, with my own soul, being deeper relationship and anchoring in that, as opposed to the external world, anchoring in my own internal compass of divinity. So, so um, if I can reflect this back to you, what I'm hearing is that you have been thinking like, oh, I want to be way up there looking down at the forest floor and you're an acorn or maybe you're a sapling. I don't know, but like, you'll get there. I'm a tree. Like, okay. Right. But, but, uh, but the idea is that like, I need to start at the root. Right. And, right. and like, I feel like I've been a bit of a potted plant and I've grown a tree and now I want to grow and I need to give down. myself to take, to grow down and out and wide, but underground it's in, but it's internal. I need to build these branches so that I can receive the nourishment to grow. Right. Often people are like, I want the fruit. I want the fruit. I want to give the fruit away. It's like the fruit can only come right. if you right. have done the internal education and reflection of what does this mean for you? Have right. you metabolized this yet? Right. Are you in relationship? Have you taken time to let your trunk thicken and grow strong so that when the winds come, so that you're bearing fruit and you have the strength to hold it under almost all conditions, right? That you have the strength and wherewithal that you need to have broad, deep and wide roots to sustain that. Um, and so, so the, your students then who are sort of saying, I, I, this isn't enough, I need more, I need more, is really that they're, they're trying to skip some stages in the life cycle of their tree. Right, just like I have been. I just want to say, I just want to be able to just tap in, tune and turn on like that. That comes and people are like, I just want to take action and racial justice and the super complex issue that's highly loaded and complicated. And I just want to be able to take action and make it easy. Breathe. And it's not easy and it is, it's not easy in general, but it gets easier the more you know yourself. Right. When you know where is the best place that you are equipped to make a difference, when you know how this issue lands for you, when you know how you feel about reparations, when you know why any number of, you know, pick a racial justice subject is important it's important that that advances for your kids and for your well-being. Because if you're not stable in that, at least in some of that, you're not equipped and you don't know your own narrative. Then when you ask, at times people think that they have an issue and this could be a whole separate conversation one day with people, like that people are resistant or don't wanna include them in the work. And it's like not at times because they've asked you questions and asked you to introduce yourself and you came back with some shallow answer. They don't know who you are because you don't know who you are in the context of this work. You know, and so all of this to say, um, and it's so simple and succinct in my brain. And it, there's like a <laughs> translation issue coming out of my mouth. It's like, I, it's trees are meditative and trees take their time. And this world as it exists right now, wouldn't be possible without trees. And trees can live for a very long time. And the take, they take the time they need 
to grow strong and big and they're in communication with each other and they often honor each other's boundaries um, and they're incredibly resilient. And so for me, I'm thinking a lot about rootedness, about hishtarshut, about belonging, uh, about connection, about being rooted in our world, in, in my own spiritual practice. And I really encourage, and it's really not what people are used to because capitalism ain't about rootedness. It's right. about money. It's about fast money. It's about producing at the expense of the planet's well-being, at the right. expense of trees, as opposed quality to, over quality. Yeah. right. As opposed to quality, really deep, rich quality bears the fruit of immense qu quantity and bounty. Um, but just what we need. I just want to add one layer that I think is is there. And um, a couple of years ago, I read this piece about um, the fact that trees through their root system actually um, are kind to one another. And by that, I mean, they will share resources um, through their root systems with other trees mm. in their immediate area. So um, if if you and I were two trees rooted near one another and I was feeling a lack for whatever reason, you know, the soil was different over here or some like a new building was up and I had less sun or whatever. I could actually communicate with you through our root system and ask for more nutrients. And you could give that to me. Um, it's through a, the, the scientists discovered this just a few years ago. And when it, when I first read about this, um, they, they use the I'm going to get the word wrong, but it's the, like the, the roots of like mushrooms, the mycelium, I think it's called yeah, uh, mycelium. So yeah. So the, the mycelium work like, um, like, like, like a nervous system almost for multiple trees so that they can interact with one another, like a, like a, like a high speed <laughs> communication, um, network un under the ground. So they talk to one another. And when I realized when it really like sunk in for me that not only can trees talk to one another talk with it, with quotes around it um but that they can and are kind to one another it just sort of blew my mind in that kind of like this world is is even more amazing and beautiful than i realized and that extra layer of those mycelium roots to your sort of leaning into rootedness and what that could mean for us it just makes it even more resonant for me I just wanted to share that. I love that so much. And I mean, and that's, you know, to be honest and brave, that's part of why I want to grow my roots around spirituality is because I know that I will begin to, I already at times know what people are going to say before they say it, you know, have different experiences. And I want to tap into the realm of the spiritual more, deeply because I'm primarily because I'm committed to justice. And about 15 years ago, I realized there's no more like 10 years ago, there's no amount of work I can do. That's going to, you know, that I need to figure out how to engage other modalities. Do you have any reflections about trees you want to share? Beyond the mycelium, um, I I guess I just I just come back to sort of the life cycle of the tree, and that you know the acorn who wishes that she could synth you know synthesize sunlight <laughs> like her big and brother, be the or, mighty oak. Yeah, like sh if she then she's got it. Yeah, exactly. If she, if she is sort of judging herself because she's not the mighty oak, it's only because she hasn't taken the time to grow. Um, and so, and that feeling that reality um, and the wisdom in um, the flexibility of a sapling so that it can withstand um, because its roots aren't deep enough to withstand the wind. And so it has to be flexible um, so that it can bend, but not break. And just some of the wisdom of the this, the life cycle of a tree. Um, I want to hold I love that. as I think about my growth. Um, and that, you know, it's only through the deep, deep roots that the mighty Oak can be as, um, 
inflexible as it is. And even the mighty oak sways in the wind. You know, if it were truly rigid, um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't survive. And so thinking about all of those things and, and the way that we develop and change um, and grow new skill, you know, earn new skills, gain new skills, practice those skills um, in the thinking about the life cycle. I find that a useful kind of metaphor to think about. So I want to wish you, Tracy, and you, the listener, a very happy to Bishvat and um, take from it the medicine and healing that you need. I think what I'm hearing from both of us, and I'd love for Tracy to add in too, is um, this to Bishvat, I'm really channeling the profound love and strength that trees model for us um, and what's possible with patience and profound commitment and trust that if we do the right things and take one step at a time, that mighty accomplishments can be achieved. I would also add that in this, this time that feels so hard, um, in the future, we'll just be one ring in that trunk and that this too shall pass. Um, yeah. And that like a tree, you have the capacity, if you aren't already strong enough to weather this season and to hopefully see many more in which there will be beautiful harvests and many beautiful days to enjoy with your fellow neighbors and friends. Um, I love the mycelium and closeness that we share, Tracy, and um, shout out to all the other potent, powerful connections we each possess, as well as each of our listeners possess in our web and network of interconnectedness, moving in the direction of our dreams. Thanks for tuning in. Our show's theme music was composed by Elliot Hammer. You can find this track and other beats on Instagram at Elliot Hammer. If this episode resonated with you, please share it and subscribe. To join the conversation, visit JewsTalkRacialJustice.com, where you can send us a question or suggestion, access our show notes, and learn more about our team. Take care until next time and stay humble and keep going.